One, two, three, four. That's sitting on a ball, <laughs> but I'm not rolling. It's a stability you, ball. You could roll. I could if you wanted to. I don't feel like rolling. if I was sitting on that, I'd be rolling onto the ground. <laughs> so well, I guess we're ready to go then. Yes. If I'm rolling, yeah, and you're ready to roll. Well, the you know recorder and the camera on. Well, that so. doesn't. That this stuff yeah. doesn't matter to people if it's right. right. If this is pre-show stuff, right? Are we going to start doing exclusive pre-show content? I don't think so. We think we've solved the mystery of the well, cinnamon potpourri. We bowl. have a suspect. By yes, the way, this do. is Mike and John Got It Going On, brought to you by Firehouse Doors. It is. I yeah. guess we're here and we're brought to you by Firehouse Doors. Oh, I think I just said that. We're Mike and John Got It Going On with Mike Marino and John oh, King. Wow, that's amazing. We're going to talk solar power today. Yes, we are. We're going to... Solar power cars? We're going to get... The, no. No? No. A solar so power project that's proposed in Conway Township, and it's, uh, you know, not everyone's on board with this, and we'll be talking with a gentleman who is uh, on the... Uh, well, he works the part of the proposal to put this solar power project in. We'll be talking with him and, uh, you know, uh, taking a look at some of the... Uh, uh, the community's objections to this. Uh, also, we'll be talking with uh, Rich Pearlberg. RP? Yeah, RP. RP? What are we talking RP about? Today? RP wants to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about politics. Well, about he, he does. Uh, he I, I don't want to talk politics with he, RP. Uh, we're we're going to kind of uh, wrap up. I don't want to talk politics with RP. <laughs> well, then I guess you'll be quiet. I will. <laughs> you can tell him. Uh, RP, I'm not talking yeah, politics. Yeah, so. If I got to talk about mm -hmm. sunshine and solar power, I don't know yeah. that I'm ready to talk about politics right. with RP. Okay. Well, I guess we'll. Okay. Well, in a way, it, you could say it's maybe talking about football, college football, with a college I, football I star who <laughs> who had a gun should've, in his car. Should've, should've, no, 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 no. Oh. I'm talking about a college football star who, uh, an NFL star, who probably should have stayed in football. Stayed He's a little too old for football. Stayed out, stayed out of politics. Ah. So, all right then. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> I can tell. about today's show. I can, then I can tell. <laughs> this was not run by me before the show began. Uh, you know, right I, now. You, I, we, you can talk to him. You can tell him how you're not you're not excited not, about. I don't want to talk about yeah. Herschel Walker. Well, you, how did you figure that out? Because I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're talking Georgia politics here on this local yeah. podcast. Does that make sense at all? Well, it's not good really. na national implications. I don't think so. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's done. Yeah. We knew he wasn't going to. Well, I just like, yeah. All right. Okay. All right, well, to the news brought to you by Cooper and Pinkley Jewelers. <laughs> I am sensing a distinct... <laughs> this is what I'll be doing. This, a distinct okay. lack of, uh, I, you I, know, enthusiasm. I don't care your about per Herschel yeah. Walker, yeah. so... Well, well, neither did voters in Georgia. It, All right. Well, it went to a runoff. Yeah. It, it did. and Well, anyway, we'll save that. See, right. you do want to talk about it. But I don't care. <laughs> well, then that will be your perspective. That's going to be You'll provide the I don't care I perspective. I thought you were doing news brought to you by oh, Cooper and Am I? Jewelers. Oh, I think I will. Hey, you know what we're going to start with? Politics. <laughs> well, you know, kind yeah. of. Oh, good. A partial recount of votes cast in Livingston County for Proposal 3, which enshrined abortion rights in Michigan's Constitution, was completed on Wednesday with a statistically insignificant change in the vote tally. In Livingston County, the recount only affected ballots in 24 precincts located in Genoa, Green Oak, Hamburg, Osceola, Putnam, and Tyrone Townships, as well as the city of Howell. It was carried out Wednesday at the LaBelle Public Safety Complex on Tooley Road, and after recounting about 17,000 ballots, a total of four yes votes were added in favor of Proposal 3. A single no vote was subtracted, a five-vote swing in support of the ballot initiative. That represents two thousandth of a percent of the ballots, essentially confirming the validity of the county's voting process and contradicting the claims by the group behind the recount effort. Meanwhile, a separate recount of the ballots cast for a seat on the Heartland Consolidated Schools Board of Education will begin at 9 a.m. on Friday. 
Candidate Greg Keller requested the recount after he and incumbent Michelle Hemeyer both received 5,264 votes November 8th. After the Livingston County Board of Canvassers confirmed the tie, they held a tiebreaker drawing in accordance with state election law. Hemeyer drew out the piece of paper that said she was elected. That, that means that she would take the seat, but rather than accept that outcome, Keller asked for a recount, which will cost the Heartland School District between ten dollars and $15,000. To conduct. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin called for smart bipartisan solutions to the crisis at the southern border during a Wednesday morning press conference on the importance of supporting border agents and their mental health needs. The Lansing Democrat was joined by Republican Tony Gonzalez of Texas and a bipartisan group of other members as well as National Border Patrol Council President Brandon Judd. Slotkin highlighted the mental strain of working in law enforcement, especially for those who patrol the nation's borders, saying that suicide among border personnel is on the rise and it was crucial they get the specialized treatment and resources they need to maintain their mental health. And more than a quarter million dollars was raised this week for families in need through the generosity of donors and sponsors. The Livingston County United Way's Matching Money Monday held December 5th, the biggest one-day fundraiser in the county. A record 39 sponsors came forward, providing $125,800 to match all of the donations that came in Monday. In all, 440 people came to the United Way offices or logged onto their website to donate $140,451. That resulted in a total of $266,251 raised. That was shy of the $300,000 goal, but United Way officials say the event was more important than ever as all of the Matching Money Monday donations will go directly to help local working families struggling to stay healthy, put food on their tables, keep their lights and heat on, and a roof over their heads. And that's what's going on. And news brought to you this time around by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. Mark Binkley could barely drive a car when his dad bought the best jewelry store in town from Mr. Cooper. He spent a lot of time there after school and weekends, enough to know that he loved the jewelry business. Mark and his family were exiting a Sunday church service when Mark saw something more dazzling than any precious stone, Barb Lockery. Successful and beautiful was a combination too great to resist. And around Valentine's Day, a nervous and pale Mark Binkley asked Barb Lockery to be his bride. They were married in the rustic, cozy church sanctuary where they met and decided to build Cooper and Binkley Jewelers together. You'll see them there every day, working hard just like you, helping people make special times in their lives even more special with a gift from Cooper and Binkley. They'd love to hear your stories of romance at Cooper and Binkley Diamond Jewelers in lovely downtown Brighton. All right. I'm going through some of the answers on our trivia from last night. Right. Wednesday night trivia. Did you know we were throwing a bonus prize in? I did know that. I didn't know if you were going to remember that or not. I did remember. I was, I was wondering if you were going to remember. I almost that. didn't remember, but I when remember. When I saw that a question got posted, I said, <clears throat> I wonder if you remember. It and said, I went and looked, and you did. Wednesday night trivia yeah. bonus. Yeah. A pair of tickets to see Little Women at the Dial. And this is a show and dinner. Yeah, and by the way, the whole run is, show, is sold out. These are yes. the last pair of seats available. Oh, man, I should have put that on the headline. Last seats available. <laughs> right. So Must a pair of tickets now. to see uh, Little Women at the Dial. December 23rd. Yeah. The question brought to you by real estate agent Tanya Z, Tanya Zirkowitz, sold by Tanya Z, whose motto is, comfort is the key to home. Read like this. According to a recent survey, which was taken not long ago, <laughs> that's why it was or in recent. a land far away. I mean, that was why it was recent. Yeah, that's right. If it was a long time survey, you wouldn't say Forty percent of people say they eat this when they get mad. Hmm. What is it? Yeah. My answer: anything. <laughs> <laughs> they call it mad oh, oh, eating. Whatever I could is in within range of I'm my mouth, <laughs> and I gotta eat. Yeah. <laughs> so I just pictured somebody getting so ferociously mad. Yeah. They've got to eat this. <laughs> God, 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 God. So Ashley said gum. Now that would be mad chewing, don't you think? Chomp, 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 chomp. Yeah, I'm really, right. you know, right. It's got to be a it's, big piece of gum. It's true. If you're that mad, not one of those little uh, dentine pieces. No, 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 no. That would be like or that's you, dainty chewing. Or you put in a bunch of. You know, you put in five or six of them. Yeah, then it's just a yeah. lot of wrappers and laying all over right. the And then it's, yeah, it's not, no, it's um, not gum. Many folks said chocolate, which I get. That's that's kind of a go-to, is chocolate. But I don't know if it, chocolate to me is more of a comfort sure. thing. So you're if you're, mad. you need to count. I, I don't mad, maybe upset, yeah. uh, worried, hungry, Concerned. whatever. <laughs> just to have a craving for chocolate? Yeah, it, might be, it might be it, I, yeah. But, but it was not chocolate. 
Katie said their words. Mm. Eat their words. No, it wasn't that no. philosophical. <laughs> no, other question. It's food. It was about food. Yeah. Uh, Patricia said junk food, which kind of encompasses everything. Right. But we needed more specificity. Specificity. <laughs> or Something that. more specific. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, our good friend Scott, great Scott, yeah. said donuts. I mean, if you got donuts around, I yeah. suppose you should go for them. It's just, you know, not donuts, though. Uh, Alicia had a more broad category, said fried food. Hmm. Just anything yeah. fried. Anything fried. Yeah, right. I mean, because you can fry anything. And People down south are really thick yeah. then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to get into politics. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Rebecca said popcorn. Yeah. Licking your fingers. Yeah. Pasta said Beth. Snickers. Pamela said meat. <laughs> I'm Give mad. I've got to have I don't care meat. if it's cooked or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kimberly said steak, so that would be... right. Uh, right in there. Michael said nuts. Right. Uh, Madonna said cookies, the whole package. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, then you're not as mad. I mean, if they're Girl Scout cookies, those are down you know, that no yeah. time. Uh, Kimberly's hubby says jerky. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, I want to point out our Facebook page has become so popular now, we are getting hit by spammers. We are? Yeah. So, so I've already standard. I've already had to block one individual, and now I see a second one uh, that are they go oh I have four tickets for sale DM me please now our very astute followers say spam because it's obviously spam this person you go check them out and they're they're garbage well this so, other person said they're looking to sell their three spare tickets yeah so is that a spam or two that might not be I'm gonna check yeah. this out that Here. might that might not be but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It looks yeah. sus suspect to me. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Kids yeah. on there. We don't do. Uh, hey, we, hey, 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 hey. We're not Ticketmaster over no, here. No, we're not. We're not StubHub. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no selling tickets on our Facebook page. <laughs> Unless you're going to cut us in. I mean, you know, if you want to. Well, yeah. You know, you're, I mean, you're in charge of we can now, look if, if you're. Let's rethink that. Okay, for now a you're right. Right. Look, if you want to sell tickets on our <laughs> Facebook page, you know, contact us and, and become. We a, get a cut. This is not yeah. your freedom to sell. Yeah. Trivia. Yeah. Answer thing. <laughs> so, I just wanted to, to point right. that out for us. But I think most people most people are fairly astute. They can see that it's. You know. All right. Let's get back to our. Yeah, questions. I'm sorry. Back to the question. Forty percent of people say they eat this when they get mad. Kevin says the hearts of their enemies. Lions or tigers. <laughs> uh, Nancy said gummies. Yeah. CBD preferred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think we get I'm it. I'm really mad. I need my CBD gum. I, I get it. Uh, crunchy food says Dawn. Uh, fast food said Christine. A couple people said fast food. Um, our answer is ice cream. And the fur, there was a few people that got it, but right. Debbie was the fur. Uh, no, no, it was uh, Nicole, Nicole. Silm Barron. Yeah, Debbie also got it right, but Nicole was in first with that one. So Nicole will get the two tickets plus dinner at the dial to see Little Women on December 23rd. Congratulations, Nicole Silm Barron, our winner this morning. Now, for those of you who are looking for tickets, you can you can search through our answers and if you want to go through that, don't. I, I would just I generally know. say don't don't go and don't just no. You should know better. I mean, people should know better. I gotta they, check out those tickets. Do know I already deleted them. Oh, you did. I was like, get, you get out of here. Hunt them down. Be gone. Bye. Out of here. That's what marketplace is for. If you want to scam people and ask for their phone number and hey, can I call you? I really want to buy those tickets. So that is. Was last night's trivia question. Congratulations to Nicole. Trivia brought to you by real estate agent Tanya Zirkel with Sold by Tanya Z. His motto is comfort is key to home. Uh, all right, is it time to talk to Rich? Yes, which I know you've been looking forward to. I, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to hold you back. Don't worry. I have my background check on Herschel Walker. Oh, okay. So if you want to get all political, hey, I can tell you. This is what he wanted to talk I about. I don't care what Rich wanted to talk about. I don't want to okay. talk about Herschel Walker. <laughs> Good morning, Mike and Jeff. Yes. Uh, we have a bit of a problem here, Rich. Uh, Mike does not want to talk about Herschel Walker. Say that again? 
<laughs> Mike does not want to talk about Herschel Walker or the Georgia Senate runoff race. He doesn't. No. Well, let's, talk about, let's talk about soccer then. <laughs> okay, let's talk, about Urza Walker. <laughs> let's talk about Urza Walker then. Uh, all right, gonna... I'll tell you what. You, you're right. That's too, uh, it's too arcane. It doesn't have uh, you know uh, resonance here locally. So let's instead talk about the Moore versus Harper Supreme Court case. Yeah, I mean, it's on all the, uh, the topics of all the coffee shops around those. Oh, God. Moore. I mean, people can't stop talking about it. Um, well, you can't, you can't uh, swing a dead cat and not hit somebody. Talking I thought you were going to say something else there. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't swing dead cats on this show, That's Rich. true. I don't, don't know what kind of stuff you're trying to bring. Don't be sick and PETA on <laughs> us. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'm not a big cat fan, but still, I wouldn't swing a dead cat at anybody. <laughs> I wouldn't touch a dead cat. <laughs> I'm allergic to cats live or dead. You guys, you guys, are, you guys are like or so so, uh, <laughs> all right. So, so right. Herschel Walker, the runoff, he lost. Oh, I thought we weren't going to talk about that. Well, I thought. Oh, we oh were, that is the conversation. I, I thought. Thanks for calling, Rich. Good. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I know. I know a lot less. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you a little about Herschel Walker. He's 60 years old and a Pisces, born <laughs> under the sign of the Tiger. Okay. I thought he was. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to use that information. I thought he was a werewolf or a vampire <laughs> or something. I don't know. You know what? I'll just say this about the Herschel Walker thing. Uh, was he involved in politics at all before this? No. Okay, I'm just He was checking. handpicked by Donald Trump. Oh. And, in fact, what is interesting about this is, is as they're beginning to look at some of these electoral returns, you know, in Georgia, Republicans did very well on the statewide ballot. All of the Every other... Race. Yeah. Every race they won, yes. Right. Um, Herschel Walker was the only one that did not do well uh, and had to go to this runoff. And then he did even worse in the runoff when he didn't have the coattails of these statewide, like Brian Kemp, who's the Republican governor, who weren't on the ballot anymore, even Republicans in conservative districts are like, mm, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I think well, I'll stay home. To be fair to Herschel Walker, they had kind of an unusual and unfair uh, rule in, in the Georgia elections. The guy who got the most votes won. <laughs> what? No wonder they're confused. <clears throat> so... Why was why was Herschel Walker chosen? What was his just because well, of the you know, name? He has a long relationship with uh, Donald Trump. Right. Trump owned the New Jersey Generals. Oh my gosh, uh, I forgot about that. USFL. Yeah. Uh, Herschel Walker uh, left Georgia one year early to uh, go to be their their uh, their marquee player. To, right. For this uh, rival league, and got paid a bunch of money in the days, and he and Trump uh, uh, forged a friendship back then that has uh, stuck together all these years. Well, so, why yeah, not have Mike Tyson be, be a, the next candidate for God's sake? Mike You're Tyson might have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I think it's not a surprise to anyone that, look, Donald Trump is going to choose people that are loyal to Donald Trump, that he has a relationship with and that he personally likes, uh, versus, is this a good candidate? <laughs> well, I just wondered what, what the draw was yeah. to him. And Okay, we got the relationship from Herschel's playing days back in 1982 when he left college early to play for the Generals. You know, that was, that. that was back when Trump was going to, take the NFL out with the USFL and well that didn't happen well yeah 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 but you know and plus there's there's kind of a a, a horrible little uh, thought process in there that says hey if we, as long as we get a black person on the ballot and who's got a football background that that uh, the blacks in Georgia will vote for him right you know? right I mean it doesn't matter that he doesn't know I mean there was one interview he had just before the election that made it sound like he was confused as to whether he was running for the U.S. Senate or the U.S. House. I, I mean, this was not your best candidate. No. no. And and he's running against an, another black man, Raphael Warnock, who is, uh, you know, very well spoken and, uh, you know, a, a very good in terms of uh, talking about issues and policy and uh, not something that was a Herschel Walker, you know, strength. Uh, and so, in a lot of ways, it blunts that. And I guess that goes back to what I'm saying, which is, you know, when you look at the people that Trump backed across the country, not just in Georgia, but in Arizona, here in Michigan, most of them did not do very well. Uh, the ones that he was like, oh, no, you're the one, you're the one. And so I, this really, I guess the, the whole thing about the Herschel Walker thing, and I guess this is where it really, really does come in, is like, 
what is the Republican Party going to do here? Uh, you know, in Michigan and nationally, they've got a choice to make. Uh, I don't yeah, think Rich no, has an no, answer. Um, <laughs> it, 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 is, it is true. It is, it's hard to say. I mean, the other way to look at it is not a single incumbent senator uh, was defeated. So so that may be part of the story. I, I think you, you, you can take two approaches to the Georgia election. One is, oh my gosh, uh, this horrible candidate prevented the Republicans from, from winning this, a state they could have otherwise won. The other hand is, as bad as he was, he still came within, what, two and a half points of winning a race. Well, yeah, they had to do a uh, recount, so... 1.7 million people voted for him, so what, what does that say? Uh, and here, here's the other thing why, why this is an important topic. Although, although Democrats are happy, as they should be, that they've got a 51-49 control in the Senate... In two years, the election map is much more favorable to Republicans. So this could be a very short-lived victory, and, and John's question becomes really critical. That's what I mean. What, what direction do the Republicans take in two years uh, to try to to try to retake the Senate? Will they will they continue letting Trump candidates uh, call the shots, or will they try to to take a different route? Well, I mean, yeah, look, I, Donald Trump runs the Republican Party. He is essentially in charge of it. He, what he says seems to pretty much be orthodoxy within the party. Um, and so, you know, will those that are in the positions of power within the party, uh, you know, uh, do they continue to, to allow that or do they start to say, all right, look, this isn't working. Uh, we're not winning. I mean, let's just uh, get down to the, the, the brass tacks here. We're not winning. Uh, we need to go in a different direction. I, I, I don't see that yet. That doesn't mean it won't happen. Well, we got two years for that. I don't think it's an either or. My, my prediction now, and, and, and this is just a cup of coffee, you know, uh, we'll get you nothing, but uh, that it'll be some part of a hybrid. You'll see Trump fade a bit and, and Trump like candidates who perhaps are a little bit more sophisticated and strategic. Uh, guys like Ron DeSantis yeah. will, will will be leading the the charge. That that'd be my guess. All right. Well, I think we know less. Yep. Than Except we, for yeah. you know that Herschel Walker's a Pisces. <laughs> 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 How old is he? <laughs> and his middle name ju is Junior. Oh, Junior. There you go. Herschel Junior. Oh, is it, it really his middle name? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Now you know. See, now I know. you learned well, a little something. You ruined the whole segment. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Too much knowledge. <laughs> All right. All right. So, how many yards did he gain in, uh, in his first year? Hey, let's, let's, not let's not push it. Let's not push it. I think he gained almost as many yards as. As bullets that Mazzy Smith had in his car. Hey, now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. The uh, smart in me just couldn't well, help it. I know you're looking forward to the big game this weekend, <laughs> Rich, and we are too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, so we're not going to talk about Herschel Walker? No. <laughs> no. 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 We decided no, against. We, we've decided yeah. not to do that. <laughs> we're not doing it. I think that's a good Right. Excellent. Yeah. When we, when we make a decision, we follow through. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, Rich, have a great week. We'll do it again next Thursday. Whatever we did, we'll do it again. Yeah, right. I'm not sure either. Right. I don't know. Let me I know. Care. Talk to you later. All right. All right. All right. All right. Mike so. and John got it going on. Brought to you by Firehouse Doors, serving Livingston County residents for almost 25 years. They'll be celebrating their silver anniversary, January 1st, and they will be having a special contest here. A they giveaway. Well, yeah. Give away silver? Eh, no. I mean, you could potentially, you know, turn it into silver. You could. But, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll have we'll, details coming we'll, Yeah, Firehouse Doors, they'll be taking care of you in January. And they'll be taking care of all your garage door needs whenever you need them. Of course, they strive to treat each customer like family. They're veteran-owned. Mike Witt, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. They're your one-stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. Those are your RSODs. Yeah, they are. Give them a call today. 810-599-7480. Firehouse Doors. All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk solar power now. You know what? Before we talk solar power, yeah, because solar power will you know turn on the lights. That's right, John. Some some people like to go old school and just have an old <laughs> plug that night light yeah. into the socket. So you know sometimes if you don't have solar power or electric power or nuclear power or any kind of power, you know this could happen to you. 
the lights could go out. And if that happens, nobody will be home. You'll <laughs> well. Yeah. Hi, Herschel. You'll be glad that you've got your McNightlights.com. Of course, uh, we're talking about our, our uh, newest sponsor here to the show, McNightlights.com. A unique gift that's sure to bring a smile on Christmas morning. Go to McNightlights.com. Upload a photo of your loved one, favorite pet, cherished memory, or you know, favorite podcast logo. There's nothing wrong with that. No, everybody not at all. should have one. And they'll turn it into a beautiful nightlight using high quality liquid resin in their 3D printer. Not cheap quality no, liquid. No, resin. no, no, no. It's a high, high quality. quality. Yeah, not this plastic filament crap. Heck, no. No. This is top notch stuff. Yeah, I turn off my lights. I can't read. The I button. can't see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> now it's twenty dollars for one, which is a great bargain. But if you buy more than one, it's fifteen bucks. Each. Night lights for everybody. Great yeah. stocking stuffer. And if you buy four, free shipping. But bite your tongue. Are you paying for shipping? <laughs> if you buy Did four. Did Dan or more. say he was yeah. gonna pay for shipping? If you buy four or more, all right. He's, uh, shipping's on him. Dan's the man. But you better go to McNightlights.com now. MC Nightlights.com. Exactly. And that way they can show up on Christmas morning. I mean, well, they usually hopefully show them before, then you can put them in the bag. Yeah, make sure you wrap them nice and Whatever, and that's up ball. to you. Yeah, McNightlights.com. All right, so there was a, a big meeting regarding... Well, yeah. So, the, the use of farm property here in Livingston County. Yeah, in Conway Township. They tried to have a meeting last month, uh, the Conway Township Planning Commission, about a proposed solar project uh, that was being put forward by Ranger Power. Uh, so many people showed up, it was more people than could possibly fit in the township hall. Sold so, out crowd, everybody. <laughs> it was a sold out crowd. So they had to put off the meeting. So the rescheduled meeting is coming up this Monday at Fowlerville Junior High School. This is the uh, rescheduled meeting of the Conway Township Planning Commission to talk about this project for Ranger Power. Then coming up next Thursday, the 15th. We're not trying to confuse you at all with no, these not at dates all. and times. Uh, the 15th, there'll be a public event uh, being called Sun 101, and that's being uh, gonna uh, be put on by uh, Peter Sinclair. Uh, and that's who we're going to talk to right now. Uh, and he's obviously advocating for the solar power project. So we want to sort of talk to him, get his point of view on this. And we would open it up to others as well. That's right. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. It's uh, Mike and John from Mike and John Got It Going On podcast. And uh, we're, we're talking Sun 101, which is, yeah. is going to be the little seminar you're going to put together for folks to somewhat educate them at Fowlerville Junior High uh, next week. Uh, regarding yeah. solar power here in Livingston County. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, so Peter, I guess explain your relationship to Ranger Power. This is the company that, that wants to put in this this project. Well, uh, I've been working uh, to kind of promote clean energy for many, 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 many years. And uh, in the last uh, five years, I've realized that there is... Uh, uh, highly organized, well-funded uh, national campaign to try to keep clean energy from competing with the fossil fuels that we've had for the last 200 years. And uh, when I saw that campaign come to my county in Midland, uh, I recognized how professional and well-organized it was. And uh, because I had some some media chops and some video chops, I felt just compelled to kind of just get involved and start pushing back. And in the course of that, I developed uh, acquaintances with a whole lot of uh, solar and wind developers around the state and around the Midwest. So I, well, I was going to say, I mean, I guess, but again, just to be, I mean, we would just want to be clear for, for our, our, our listeners, uh, your, your connection to Ranger Power. Yeah, sure. I'm, yeah. I am a consultant okay. uh, to Ranger okay. Power Great. and uh, and to a number of other uh, solar and wind developers around the Midwest. Well, I was right. going to say, in in the state of Michigan alone, there's there's quite a few areas that have uh, the windmills and solar power, and and up yep. near you in Midland, there's there's some as well. Correct. You bet. Yeah, yeah, lots of them. And, you know, if you're if you're heading west, uh, the west part of the state, there's some there too. So, what's the opposition in in this area for Conway Township? Well, I'm just learning about it. Uh, uh, it it's pretty typical for what we see. Um, uh, they, somebody reads something on Facebook, and, and uh, we've kind of seen what uh, what a rabbit.
hole uh, social media can be. Is what? Misinformation. What? <laughs> misinformation on social media? Peter, now come on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope you guys are sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's misinformation on social media. And, and some people, for a variety of reasons, decide that uh, uh, providing uh, property rights and, and, and a diversified income for farmers uh, is maybe not in their best interest. And uh, oftentimes they will promote these uh, Facebook pages, heard a whole bunch of people onto them, forbid any dissenting voices, and then just sort of feed them a whole line of increasingly crazy stuff. And pretty soon you got a whole bunch of angry people. And um, and we should say there, I mean, there is a Facebook page that has arisen, uh, Conway Township Utility Scale Solar Information Page. Uh, is something that's come up, and it's a closed group. Uh, you right. know, when I go to look at it, uh, you, you you can't see the information that's there. But obviously, these are residents who are opposed to this project, and I understand what you're saying that you know uh, there's probably some misinformation out there. You'd like to correct it. That's what you're hoping to do on Thursday, December fifteenth, at Fowlerville Junior High School, uh, holding this Sun One Hundred and One event. Uh, yeah. have so, you, have you run into this with the other uh, other uh, locations that you've been a part of? Well, the it's opposition. A it's a template. It, it's it's uh, not only here in Livingston County. It's uh, it's what we saw up here in Midland and Isabella. It's what we've seen all over the state of Michigan and all over the Midwest. And so, so who who's pushing it? Do you think? Well, the fossil fuel industry yeah, okay. has very shrewdly identified uh, the township officials and township uh, boards as the choke point where they can slow the energy transition, the, the, the critical energy transition that we're in right now. And they kind of know that they can't win, but they can slow it down. And uh, billions of dollars are on the table. So, um, you know, people have been recruited and taken to Washington, D.C. and trained at uh, think tanks, so-called think tanks there. And, um, and they are out in the field uh, organizing and of course on social media you can do all this uh, in such a way as that uh well, well, so you get people riled up. Well, so. and, and and obviously the opposition group is going to say, oh, that's what's happening here, that, you know, Ranger Power has hired you as a consultant to come in, and, and they're going to say what you're saying is misinformation. So in that sense, this is where social media, you, you it's it's difficult sometimes for folks to, to kind of get, like, wait, what is actually happening? Yeah. But, no, but I, totally, for, I totally get that. Yeah. And, and for that reason, you know, I am a videographer, and uh, I specialize in environment and energy, and... I don't call myself an expert, and I don't expect anybody to take anything from me. So what I bring is interviews with people who are experts. And by expert, I typically mean someone with a PhD, 10, 20 years in a field or more. And then I ask them the questions that I want to know the answers to, or other people might not want to know the answers to. And, um, and then I just, I just present that. You know. And I and I guess that you have a web page, uh, sun101.org. And, Correct. And when you go there, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and I, I see that there are a, a variety of YouTube videos that are linked here of various individuals, uh, you know, talking about, uh, and like, for instance, like uh, uh, Dr. Wolfgang Bauer from Michigan State University yep. uh, listed here, uh, uh, Mark Dyson from the Rocky Mountain Institute, and, and others. Uh, who are talking about the benefits and and I guess information behind solar power? I will ask you this, and so Peter, maybe and and, and for, again, people that would like to know more from this perspective can come out on December fifteenth, seven to nine p.m. at Fowlerville Junior High School, uh, free event, and um, you know they can come and, and learn more, uh, you know, uh, to, to to find out more from from again from this perspective. But one of the key things I've heard uh, from people that are opposed to this, and, and something I've heard generally speaking about solar panels, is that the panels themselves are not recyclable, uh, and that they contain hazardous materials that could potentially leak into uh, the ground and, and and poison the groundwater. You know, that is that's a common point that I've heard. Is that something you've also heard? Well, it's something I set out right away to right. to find out. 
find out about. And so, you know, following my, my protocol, I uh, found my way to Dr. Ani Kantil at uh, Michigan State University, uh, Dr. Josh Pierce at Michigan Tech University, uh, Jeff Lake, who's a plant biologist at Adrian College, and, uh, and a few others. And I just asked him straight up, uh, has there ever been an instance of soil or water being contaminated? Uh, by a solar farm such as is proposed here and the answer is just a flat no uh, in fact uh, Dr. Pierce uh, called contacts at the Department of Energy to see if anybody had ever heard of such thing and it simply never happened now they actually make the silicon the polycrystal and silicon uh, for solar panels up near me uh, Saginaw County and Hemlock Semiconductor, which is a very large uh, operation, employs a lot of people. And so it's basically the, the, the raw material is sand, uh, which they, you know, they apply a whole lot of uh, transformations to and come out with this polycrystalline silicon, which basically you could grind up and put it on your cereal. Uh, so Not it's recommended, kind of, but... No, well, no, it's kind of hard on your teeth. Yeah. But, uh, but Will you be silicon. eating a bowl of this at the event on December 15th? <laughs> you know, silicon is used in medical devices for the very reason that it has no uh, toxicity right. or, or interaction with... Uh, I, I mean, well, that, it sounds like they're giving you ammunition when you look at all the things with fossil fuels and what they can do with leakage into our, our streams and our, our, uh, our land as far as like an old gas station when you find out how bad that, that land is. It sounds like they're just giving you ammunition for that as far as other... <laughs> fueling well, sources. Well, you know, uh, the reason that our, we have to have caution about eating our fish in the Great Lakes is in large part because of burning coal and the mercury that that puts into our environment, as well as a whole lot of other stuff. And all over the country, we have uh, literal mountains of coal ash that uh, is leaking into uh, groundwater, uh, surface water, and it contains lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, and a hundred other really awful things that uh, eventually taxpayers or ratepayers are going to have to uh, pay a whole lot of money to uh, to rectify. Either either we rectify those leaks or we just live with them forever. Um, well, let so, me let me change gears a little bit here. Were you uh, were you surprised that there were so many people at this Conway Township meeting that they had to relocate it regarding this subject? Uh, yeah, I'm not completely surprised. I mean, it, it happens from time to time. It, you, uh, it happened here in uh, uh, Midland County, the first meeting that I went to in regard to a wind farm. Uh, what was interesting is that so many people came from so far away. Uh, I mean, people drove literally two and three hours. So way, way outside the affected area itself. Totally yeah. outside okay. the affected area. And and to show up at a little township hall and kind of be menacing and nasty to... Uh, to my local officials here. All right, and we should and we should be clear. That's something that happened up up where you live. Correct. We don't know that that's what happened or is going to happen in Conway Township. I mean, we know that more about two hundred people showed up when they originally scheduled the meeting, uh, November fourteenth. The, the the hall itself could only hold ninety eight. So just by that reason alone, they said, "Look, we got to reschedule." Which they have rescheduled it for this Monday, uh, December twelfth at seven p.m. The rescheduled mm -hmm. Conway Township Planning Commission will also be held at Fowlerville Junior High School. Right. And um, and that'll be an opportunity for folks to come and uh, speak during call to the public and talk to public officials as well. Your event follows three days later. Correct. Um, same location. Yeah, same location. Yeah. Uh, you know, so do you expect, when you when you hold your event, the Sun 101, uh, on, on the 15th, on Thursday, uh, and, and it is an RSVP event, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah um, you're requesting yeah. RSVPs. I mean, are are you prepared for a hostile, you know, uh, greeting? Uh, you know, how has that happened to you before when you've held these? Well, a, a lot of times uh, the, the anti people just don't show up, and okay. I think it's because they, they've got their, you know, they they've got their storyline off of Facebook, and they don't want anybody to muddy it up. 
So their mind is made up and they're not necessarily, I mean, then yeah. that's the perspective right. you're saying. So, um, well, I guess, look, this is an opportunity for folks if they're, if they want to learn more, uh, sure. they can, they can come out on the 15th. And again, at Fowlerville Junior High School, uh, and then the meeting itself, the rescheduled planning commission meeting on the 12th, uh, also at Fowlerville Junior High School. Are you uh, going to be at that one, Peter, or no? Uh, uh, I, I'm going to be at both of those events. Okay. Okay. Uh, Obviously, I'll be at the one I know you'll be at Saturday. one on Thursday. Right. I just wondered if you were were going to attend the uh, one at Conway Township. I, that I, I hope to, uh, just, if nothing else, just to kind of soak it in. Uh, soak it in. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And then, well, obviously be prepared for, for your meeting on the 15th. Uh, to sort of, I guess, talk about some of the things. And, and, and particularly, you know, other things you're going to talk about, I mean, there are concern about property values when you have these big solar farms, uh, the use of farmland to host them, uh, you know, uh, the potential impact on wildlife, property rights, things like that. These are issues that you plan to deal with in your event on the 15th. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see what people say at the planning commission meeting on the 12th and how planning commissioners themselves will react. I mean, my understanding of this is, is that the, the project that's being proposed by Ranger Power, it's a 1500 acre solar project. It is, it's essentially within the zoning uh, regulations of the township. They're not proposing anything that's outside the zoning of, that I'm aware of. Um, and, and so, as you said, there's this, sometimes there'll be a bottleneck where they can sort of hold projects up at this planning stage before, because there's, it's not as if this project is gonna receive approval on Monday or Thursday. This is right. just the first of many steps that would have to be taken before the project itself would actually, you know, receive final approval and go into construction. It's a process, yeah. Right, right, so. How long does something like this, have, have you seen in the past, go from the, the talking stages we're at right here for Conway Township and, and actually wind farms being put up? Or solar farms. Well, of course, we're talking about farm. solar farms, yeah. but, uh, you know, it, it, it can vary wildly, you know, uh, if, if everybody's on board and, you know, uh, you can go through that process in, in uh, you know, a year or less, I would think. Yeah. And, and then uh, the beauty of, of clean energy is that once you get that permit, then uh the construction process is very, very quick. So you can get it up and running and you don't have ratepayers on the hook for a whole lot of uh, capital uh, while the thing is being built. Right. And that's one of the key advantages and what, what makes the solar and wind the cheapest new electricity that you can put on the grid. And what's the uh, advantage for those that own the land, the farm, uh, that you would be well, using the land? It's a significant advantage yeah. for the farmers because Let's face it, farming is not an uh, easy business. Right. And uh, but our farmers are really important, and that's a big reason why I'm involved in this because farmers are being driven off the land just by uh, you know uh, the price of their inputs and the difficulty of, of staying in business and, and in increasing incidence of extreme weather events which is happening and this could be uh, a backup source of income or the source of income really for totally, those totally yeah. totally you know and to that point i there's landowners in conway township who have signed up to do this who want this project right. on their and land are, i think that's a yeah, significant yeah. point to make uh oh, that, yeah. yeah and and they are uh long time farmers uh in the area and uh, I have the, the radical uh, idea that uh, if we're interested in preserving farmland, maybe we should think about preserving the farmers who are the stewards of that land. And many, in many cases, for more than 100 years, okay. you know, yeah. and, and yet we have, again, I have another radical idea, which is property rights, <laughs> which used to be. This is my uh, land. I'll do what I want. I mean, it, right? as long as if you're within the zoning regulations and you're following sure. the law, then why shouldn't you be able to do something on your property? That I, is, I'm, I'm yeah. told that there used to be people called conservatives who held these values. Um, I don't think you're making nope. any friends, Peter. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but right. but the point is taken. So again, uh, uh, the the rescheduled planning commission meeting is Monday the 12th, Fowlerville Junior High School, 7 p.m. and then Sun 101 with uh, consultant Peter Sinclair. That'll be December 15th, also at Fowlerville Junior High. Uh, and uh, it's a free event, but they are requesting RSVP. People can go to headlandsolar.com 
uh, to do that. And again, they can go to your website, sun101.org, and see these interviews, like you said, and, and get a lot of the information there. All right, Peter, appreciate you to, uh, joining us here on the podcast this morning. Thanks for checking in. Hey, great work, guys. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. And, and we should say for folks that are opposed to this, uh, please, you know, we are more than happy to have you on the show as well and express your point of view. Um, or if if one of the one of the landowners that has allowed uh, that has you know wants the solar project to come through, we'd like to hear from them as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah, so uh, you know, uh, reach out to us. Uh, you know, it's Mike and John for the win at gmail.com. Mike and John, the number four, the win at gmail.com and uh, we'd love to have you on the show and talk more about this. Wow, I didn't know we had an email. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know where it is? It's on our website. Our website, mikeandjohnpodcast.com. Hey. Wow. <laughs> and you know, if you go to mikeandjohnpodcast.com, you know, we got a comment yesterday. We did? We did from a, a, a viewer who used our mobile site. They yes. went on their website and they, they said, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, they were like, hey, the, it's kind of difficult to read some of your news stories because the top banner is so big and you've got this holiday banner at the bottom that's kind of big. And so I'm only able to read a couple. And I went and looked and I'm like, gosh, you're right. So I got a hold of Austin Lee. He's the guy in charge of our website from Orb Solutions. Exactly. And, and what I, did Austin say? And I said, hey, Austin, I passed along the comment. I said, you know, and I looked at it. I said, I, I kind of agree with what she's saying. It does not look like a great optimal. So Austin said, get a bigger phone. <laughs> No, that's not no, what Austin No, he did not. Said. Austin got in there and he fixed it. He crawled in. And he said, you know what? The internet. He also said, you know what? She's right. And he said, you know, and he, he made the logo a little bit smaller at the top. Made the other thing. And so we maximize the user experience on our mobile use. And so that's the kind of thing we like from Orb Solutions. It's, I told him just to put Mike bigger and John <laughs> right. smaller. Right, I don't think it's going to just that, be half of half the page of this. And the other <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, again, Austin Lee at Orb Solutions uh, handles our website. He's very responsive, uh, great guy. We appreciate all the work he's done. And of course, uh, if you want to know more, if you've got a business that you would like to, you know, better utilize your website for, a lot of people they create a website and they kind of just yeah, it's there and eh. Um, and, and they don't really maximize what it can possibly do for their business. Austin Lee is the guy to make sure that your website pays off. Orb.solutions. Exactly. That's where you'll find Austin. So he does a great job for us, and I'm sure he'll do it for you as well. Today is December 8th. It's Thursday, December 8th, 2022. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And it's time for our Two Cent History lesson here on this National Chocolate Brownie Day. No nuts needed for your National Chocolate Brownie Day. It can just be a flat out regular. I don't mind brownie. nuts, but I don't, I don't seek them out in my brownies. <laughs> Wanted to clear that up, <laughs> or anywhere else well, for right. that I mean, matter. I guess I should have cleared that up. <laughs> Got to clear up when I was clearing up. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> the Tuesday History Lesson is brought to you by Oakland Insurance. That's right, Drew Goebel at Oakland Insurance. Give them a call today: 248-647-2500. The first. Mashing up of a human being in the United States happened on this date. The first cremation took place. Oh, seventeen. A mashing up. Mashing I, up of a human being okay. remains. Well, they burned. Boom. Yeah. And I, I thought they squished, squished them. <laughs> well, they might have squished them first and had a little fire. Like, like, oh my God, it's like a Gallagher concert. So, <laughs> it was in uh, 1792. That place is now one of those. Uh, one of those stone pizza oven places. Oh, that's good. <laughs> What's your special ingredient? <laughs> oh, Don't that, ask. That, that guy was spicy. Don't ask. <laughs> 1792, the first cremation in the United States took place yeah. on this day. And I think more people are getting cremated now than are getting buried. I mean, that's, you know. Well, you know, you don't have to worry about. Well, there's there's been stories of buildings built on top of cemeteries and stuff like that. At a certain point, I mean, also, I mean, I've been to cemeteries where you're like the headstones have sunk below the ground and they're knocked over and no one's crooked. taking care of it anymore, and you're like, you know, time yeah. marches on. There was a place where I saw a tombstone for a radio not long ago. <laughs> I think it was right there. <laughs> it was right here. Yeah, I'm sitting on that very spot. 1863, Abraham Lincoln announced plans to reconstruct the South. The reconstruction of the South, mm. we will rebuild it. That's right. And Jimmy Carter's been hammering nails ever since. That's right. <laughs> hey, man, you got to give Jimmy credit. Oh, yeah. Has He's that, in his 90s and still he, I, 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 I think even earlier this year he had still gone out. And, you know, gosh. 19, 1909, the Bird Banding Society was founded. <laughs> wow, that's uh, quite a crazy bunch. It, it kind of was. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's put a band around these yeah. little birds. I mean, you have to be very intricate. Very delicate. You know, and, yeah. and what they used 
was ties from <laughs> the bread bags. Yeah, bread bags. Yeah, <laughs> they twist them. <laughs> Put a red one on that one. See, now they try to use those little plastic tags, and the bird's like, ow. They got a zip ow. tie. Yeah. Oops, got them both together. He's not going to be able to walk very well. 1980. John Lennon was shot on this day five times by Mark Chapman outside the Dakota building in New York City. 42 years ago. Yeah. Wow. And mm. uh, I think a lot of us were watching Monday Night Football yeah. when they... Howard the Cosell news. made the announcement. I, I was as well, yeah. Oh, well. 1998, the FBI released its files on Frank Sinatra. Files contained 1,300 pages. Frank was a radical. He's being I mean, investigated. He was a, in a radical in the sense that back in the in the 40s and 50s and, and onward, he was for, you know, equal rights and integration. And at the time, that was not a... Uh, he was with the mob. He was the know. chairman of the board, you know. <laughs> he, had some he, had he had some friends. Well, besides They liked Sammy to go and have and dinner. And you know, you, you, you're making some sense. But Liza. no, but, 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 Frank, but Frank was a bit of a radical. So I'm not surprised he had an FBI. All right, then. He did it his way. Well, right? he did. Most of us of our generation, huh. we remember Frank when he was older and he'd show up on like Charlie's Angels or Love Boat and you're like, who's that old crooner? I, I don't What's think Frank Sinatra ever showed up on Love Boat. Well, just maybe fancy, I don't know. Maybe it was a murderer in Charlie's Angels or Toma. I, I can't remember that there was a movie he made, I think in the 70s, where it was like, we played a cop and you're like, mm, I don't uh, yeah. think, Frank, I don't, it's not happening anymore. Yeah. That's what people are saying about us right well, now. Well, no, they're not. not they happening. love us. <laughs> 2013 on this day, the, the electric guitar played by Bob Dylan mm. at the 1965 New, Newport Folk Festival sold at auction. $965,000. Damn. Bob not necessarily known for having that electric guitar plugged in and jamming out. But when he broke it out at the 65 Newport like, Folk Whoa. Festival, that was a big deal. They were like, uh-oh, Bob sold out. Yeah. If only that was a solar-powered guitar. <laughs> That he played in Conway Township. You know, I would like <laughs> to see the guitarist come up there with, a big, with the big panel on it, you know. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> knocking over the drum kit. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> roadie has got to be huge. <laughs> sorry. We, we, sorry, the concert's got to wrap up at 6. Because the sun goes down. It's going down. <laughs> well, it's an old folks show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's true now. Classic rock show. <laughs> so, as Bob Dylan's electric guitar was being sold at auction in 2013, Metallica played a gig inside a dome at the Argenti uh, Argentine Antarctica base Carlini. Sure. Thus becoming the first band to play on all seven continents. Oh, wow. Nice. In Antarctica. And that's your two sentences. Right? Okay. I'm kind of worn out. Oh, that's funny. You ended on Metallica note. Yeah, I did. That's okay. And Drew Goble a is a huge Metallica fan. By is he really? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? He follows him around show to show, drags his family along. Pulls him in a, a radio <laughs> flyer. <laughs> That's true. Come on, yeah. kids. Yeah, just, We're going yeah. to the Metallica show. Sell lemonade so we can pay for these tickets. <laughs> uh, Drew Goble, of course, Oakland Insurance and Michigan-based Frank and Muth Insurance. He believes the best relationships are honest, upfront, and fair. And you can depend on Drew Goble to personally work with you on your insurance needs. Give them a call today, 248-647-2500. Drew Gold from Oakland Insurance. Yeah. You know, I want to talk about the most American-made car. Do you have okay. any idea what it is? The most American? For like 20? Ever? No. no oh, oh okay. This year's right. most American, because everybody, buy American, buy American. So when they say the they mean car. like 100% or close to 100% like, of the parts? Close to 100%. Which, in this world, you're not going to get 100%. Not but, anymore, okay. fella. What's the? Can you say what the percentage is? I can say, after I tell you, if your car has problems... You go to Murphy's Family Auto. I don't know if they work you know on solar what? cars Here's yet. Here's the thing. But when they come about, they will. Yeah. They'll work on your car no matter what the percentage of parts is. That's right. Murphy's Family Auto. Yeah. Open on su uh, Saturdays from 8 to 1. Give them a call, 517-552-3040. Tell them Mike and John sent you. Say 5% off your bill. Say I want the whole shebang. Yeah, that's what John said. Murphy'sFamilyAuto.com. All right. Every year, Americans, uh, American universities... Co Good School of Business okay. releases a list of vehicles built with the largest percentage of American sourced parts. Last year for the 2022 model, the manual, in other words, stick shift, which kids don't know about these days, 
Kids aren't Ford the only one I Mustang know. GT. Oh. Was the top spot with a score of 88.5. Okay. So I think if you want to support American made automobiles, we all go out and get a Mustang GT stick shift. You know what? That's I would, what I think. I would say, furthermore, God bless America. For supporters of Mike and John got it going on, you need to go to our Venmo. And give us and enough money. Give to us get enough a money to Ford GT so that Mustang. we can drive around in our eighty-eight point five percent American-made American car automobile. proudly. I'm yes. No, there's nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Let me check. All right. No, nope, well, take yet. your time. <laughs> okay. We'll give you until tomorrow. Okay. We want to hit the end of the year. Right. You know what? We will check our Venmo account tomorrow, and there <laughs> better be how much money does those things cost? Uh, not cheap. Uh, no, no, we're gonna need a lot. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go to the Uber. <laughs> this year's most American cars are both Fords and the Lincoln Corsair is also in that category. The Corsair plug-in hybrid also in the top 10. Also scoring a, a bigger score was the Tesla Model 3. Long range, 82.5%. Okay. So either by a Ford or a Tesla. All right. Or a Lincoln Corsair. Yeah, we'll take either one. Yeah, we will. I mean, we're fine. Uh, so uh, the MSRP on the 22, uh, well, on a Mustang GT. Yeah, it's got to be a GT stick shift. I mean, if you get the base, I mean, it's like, 40, it's like 40 grand. No, we're going to do the base. What what we, do we look it's like a basic? GT. Yeah. For good travel. I see one here. Got time. <laughs> you know get what? There. Tell you what. Lasco Ford and Fenton has one for us. How much is it? Just a, a mere 44 grand. See? Well, you know. All right. See, what do you think? That's it nice. says the order banks are open. We can okay. order. Okay. So we need to get $44,000 from plus you tax. into our Venmo. No, plus tax. We don't want to pay the tax. Either. Okay. We, we need to get, get what, 50, 50, 50, 50 grand. A nice even 50 grand. Put some gas in well, that sucker. Oh, well, then we're going to need 60 grand. 60, <laughs> so we'll check our Venmo tomorrow. All right. Okay. Let's get that done. So we yeah. can buy American. Oh, yeah. And love it. Oh, gosh, yes. All right. All right. So. I think we're... We're done here. We're done? Yeah. Okay. Welcome John got it going on. You've been giggling with Mike and John. Tune in next time and giggle on. Okay, here we are in post show. I've got and, uh, our post show. If you could just dim the light there, because oh. this is a little something we started yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh. Known as story time with Uncle John. <laughs> uh, can you, Page can, two of Ishkadoodle. Of Ishkadoodle. Can, right. can you read with the? No. You got uh, yeah, I can music. Yeah, let's turn on the other one. Oh, you got enough light off the yeah, light? Yeah, I think we're pretty sure. I can turn on the other right. mic and John. So thing. yesterday, we told you when, about Ishkadoodle and his friend Vroomy, the vacuum cleaner. Okay. Where we last left that's off. Where, yeah, that's where on we last episode. We introduced them to you. <laughs> yes, we right. did. One sunny day, Ishkadoodle and Vroomy headed to the park. When they arrived, Ishkadoodle noticed a large crowd had gathered around a man. He wondered what it was all about. The man was asking the crowd for volunteers to go on a special trip. Wow. Don't get in the van. No, don't get in a van with a stranger, even if he's got a cool vacuum. The man said, who wants to go into outer space? We have monthly missions, and we need people for these once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. Almost everyone raised their hand. Some jumping up and down, others yelling, Pick me, pick me! Ishkadoodle wanted to go. But when he raised his hand, no one could see him. Not wanting to be left out, he climbed to the top of Rumi. Climbed on top of his vacuum cleaner. That's the best spot. <laughs> and again raised his hand. <laughs> now he was taller than everyone else. Tune in Till next time. Till next time. Will, will Ishkadoodle get picked? Will he go to space? Was will that vacuum cleaner plugged in? <laughs> Will you care when Ishkadoodle hopped on, Rumi? <laughs> hmm. Or was it a solar powered or battery powered oh. Oh, I don't know. vacuum cleaner? Hmm. You'll have to tune in next time. Tune in tomorrow. <laughs>